guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another Make Shop Pro video. So today we're going to be taking five different individual portrait photos and combining them into a single group photo. Now this combination is not like trying to mimic reality or trying to like insert somebody into a photo when they were missing. Uh, this is trying to kind of stylistically bring together a bunch of different people to create like something like a movie poster or a very stylized family picture or uh, this could be used also for things like a team sports kind of uh, picture. It's just meant to kind of bring separate people together but not like in as if they were standing all in the same room. Now before we jump uh, deep into the actual technique, um, I do want to talk a little bit about photo selection. In this particular case, I kind of wanted there to be at least some consistency in the lighting of each of the different uh, subjects. As you're kind of looking at the five different photos, you'll see that the lighting's not perfectly consistent, but at least it's kind of like a soft, diffused, there's no harsh sunlight kinds of shadows on any particular face. As well, the perspective is roughly the same. Like you can you can tell that this is probably most of these photos were probably taken with a, you know, anywhere from like a 28 to a 50 millimeter lens um, at a, you know, very, fairly standard distance away. So that kind of consistency to me just helps as we bring all these pictures together. So now this is kind of where we're starting at. Uh, I have all of the individuals already removed from their backgrounds just so that we're not spending time on that detail. I've also kind of done a little bit of tweaking on the contrast between the different images, um, you know, looking at the original set. Uh, some, some images have much more contrast than others, and there's a number of different contrast tools that can be used to try to get at least some manner of consistency. It's not gonna matter a whole lot because of the amount of processing that's gonna be happening on the images in my particular case with this sort of icy theme, but um, from what I found, uh, it's, it's good to try to at least have some consistency across all the images. So background removed, contrast made consistent, and I've also kind of pseudo arranged them already uh, into, you know, kind of a shape that I liked. And, and another so kind of minor detail here, um, just like in terms of like the engagement with the viewer, you know, you have the person who's front and center looking straight at you. Uh, you know, the person on the left's body's facing this way, the person's on the right's body's facing this way, and you've got people all kind of looking outward from the center. So it just has like sort of just this consistent circular feel in terms of focus from each of the individuals. Minor detail, not absolutely necessary, just thought I'd mention it anyway. So then to get into starting to really build up this image, um, I have another image that I don't have in here yet, which is what I'm going to use as the background. So we'll drag that in, bring it to the bottom. And and it's kind of like a picture of, of like ice formed on something or, or whatnot. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter too much. It's just that it, it kind of went along with the theme that I was going for. So next, a major component of the arrangement here is the uh, text. Um, just because I figured, you know, in a stylized photo like this, you're going to have some kind of text, whether it's the name of the team or the show or the family. In this case, I'm just going to kind of pretend like this is a family, so I'm gonna give the family a name. So we can go down here to layers and say new vector layer, and then go to our text tool, and then click somewhere on the image and just begin typing. If your text doesn't show up too well, um, it's likely because of whatever material you're using. In my case, I'm just gonna switch it to something that's easy to see, like white. Also in this case, um, I kinda want the text to be pretty thick just because it's gonna kinda become sort of the lower boundary for all of these folks' bodies, these the trunks that are kind of cut off. And so you can see all the images, kind of all of them, their waists kind of became the, the cutoff point in the image. So for the folks in the back, obviously that's obscured by the folks in the front, but for the folks in the front, we have all of these sorts of, you know, lines. So the text is what's gonna help kind of mask that, that cutoff point there. And we're gonna add a little bit more texture as well. Um, but just for this particular case, um, I'm going to 
gonna call this group the Waltons. This is not attempting to bear any resemblance to any group of people that might actually be called the Waltons. If they do, it's purely coincidence. And then to give this just like a little bit more style, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a warp on this text. But before I can do that, I need to convert to path. Make sure the text layer is selected. And then run my little nifty text warping script. And I want to affect the bottom and I want to bring it down by 100% ish. And then what we'll see is it made a copy and it warped the text so I can get rid of the original and then just be left with this nice warped version of the Waltons. So now let's kind of affect the color of the image in general. So the first thing that I want to do is at the top, above the, the highest layer of one of the people, I want to add a adjustment layer that is hue, saturation, and lightness. And, and the reason why I want to go the route of an adjustment layer is primarily because it'll then affect everything underneath it. So I won't have to apply this hue, saturation, and lightness to all of these different layers. I can just keep it up here and it's gonna affect everything underneath. So then I can just kind of bring the saturation down just a bit. I don't want to go full because I do want this to have some variability in it. I do want there to be some, some hue differences even though we're going to add a color cast in the end. So we'll hit OK. Then we'll add a new raster layer. And then we're just gonna flood fill this with a color. And since I'm going for like an icy theme here, I'm just gonna pick like a very bright light blue color uh, and just click the flood fill, fill it in, and then change that blend layer to soft light. So then now we can see it kind of created that color cast that I was talking about. And you can, you can adjust the opacity if you want to allow some of the original color to still come through a little bit more. All right, so next we're gonna add a little bit of texture, partially to hide some of these lines back here and create a little bit of separation between the folks in the front and the folks in the back. So to start out with creating the texture in the front, We'll take the layer that has the most front person and on top of that create a new raster layer and select a brush. And then um, what you'll want to do is find some type of brush that has a manner of texture in it. So the I have a bunch of brushes from BrushEasy.com. The one in particular that I'm going to use for this effect, Dispersion 113. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be kind of like overshooting a little bit and then bringing it back. So we'll shrink this down and then just paint some white kind of all over here. If you go a little bit too far, then we can break out the eraser and you know keep the hardness down because we still want it to kind of blend. And then you can kind of walk it back in and then also, even because there's kind of some, you know, straight lines created by the edges of this dispersion brush, we kind of need to walk it back even up at the top. Using a low opacity, don't want to obscure the faces. And this is really, how much you bring this back is really just a question of how much detail you want on the subjects. All right, so now that we have that, we want to create a similar effect, but for the folks that are in the back. So what we wanna do is kind of walk down beyond the folks that are in the front and then create a new raster layer in between. And then return back to our brush, which should have the, still the same brush that we had before. And then paint once again, but now we'll see that the snow is kind of, you know, kept behind the front layer of the folks and then just applied to the folks in the back. Same, same procedure, uh, erasing just to bring it back a little bit and remove any obvious like straight lines from the brush caused by the, by the brush edges.
All right, so we're looking pretty good, but you can still see kind of some of that line, that edging that's, that, that's at the bottom of some of these figures. And so just to kind of make it a little less obvious, we can just switch to our brush. And instead of doing a dispersion brush, at this point we can use just the default, maybe use a low hardness, but come down here and just kind of paint a little bit of extra white just so that there isn't like an obvious line down there. All right. So now that we've applied this dispersion down here, we've kind of lost our text. And there's a few ways that we can bring it back. One simple way is to use layer styles. So if we were to um, go to Drop Shadow, for example, I have a preset that I like to use called Just Above, and all that really does um, is it enables Drop Shadow and it puts it pretty much almost directly behind whatever the object in the layer is. So if we were to view that, we'll see it just puts the shadow directly behind. It doesn't really offset too much in any one direction. Now the color of the shadow kind of doesn't match the rest of the, the scene, so we kind of need to find a color in here that maybe is a little bit more aligned with this. That, that actually works pretty good, that color right there. Um, but you can kind of play with it and see what different effects that might cause, but just by adding that drop shadow, we have a lot more separation now with our text again, even amidst the really white background. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do for each of the individuals is add this sort of stylistic effect that kind of decontrasts the individual, but also kind of adds this sort of snowy edging to it. It's really kind of an interesting effect in this, in this way, but um, we're gonna want to be able to control how much of that effect is applied to different parts of the subject. So to do that, what we're gonna do is duplicate the subjects first, apply the effect, and then erase in certain areas or mask, if you will, um, um, to reduce the effect in certain parts. So let's start with the, the gentleman on the right. So we're going to duplicate him as his layer. Then we're on that duplicated layer on the top. We're going to effects, artistic effects, and colored edges. So now when this effect is applied with these settings that I have here, and notice one key part of it is that the color is white you'll see that it has this sort of effect of obviously adding white to wherever it finds edges, but it also desaturates like that whole, even the dark parts of the image. Now, the these settings, the numbers probably vary depending on image size. And so my image that I'm working with right now is a 2000 by 2600 uh, image. If you have a much larger image, you may have to tweak these a little bit. But if we kind of zoom in just to kind of see what that effect was, it has it does a few things. It kind of gives it almost somewhat of a painterly effect. You can see it's almost like a median filter effect, but then it adds all these really like bright lines. And um, you may like that, and you could just leave it the way it is. You don't have to do this sort of duplicate layer thing. But um, I've I, I I've found for what I'm trying to do here, there's it, it does a, a lot of really good things, but what it does to the face, I'm not really a big fan of. So. I'm gonna walk through and do the rest of them and then we'll see what kind of backing off the effect looks like. All right, so we've applied the effect now to every one of our subjects. And like I said, if, if to me personally, I feel like it kind of messes up the face or makes the faces a little bit less recognizable. Um, and so what we can do though, to kind of throttle it back without undoing the entire effect is on the copy layers, you know, that have this colored edge effect, we can just simply take our eraser, keep the opacity pretty low, hardness even kind of low. Well, hardness can probably be whatever you want it to be, but but really I'm just going to focus in on on like the eyes, nose and mouth and kind of just bring bring some of that back. Just because I feel like it kind of it kind of brings the picture of it being a portrait back to a little bit more natural. So then we're going to do this for all of the different faces. All right, so there we have it now. You know, we kind of have that sort of snowy effect on their clothes, maybe like their arms or whatever they're holding, all that kind of stuff. But their faces still kind of have a bit more of a natural look. And like as a final touch, Perhaps you want to add like a gradient to the text. I mean, we could we could even do that too. 
Since we changed it to path, we got to make sure we have the pen tool selected so that we can change the material. And then I'll just choose a gradient that I created not too long ago for this called ice. Put the dark on the bottom. And then you can see, actually now at this point, the color doesn't match nearly as well. But what I can do is go to my gradient, and then in the dark gray color, I can click on this side, and this is where I can edit that color, and I can hold control, and then sample, I don't know, some part of the image that might have the, the color I'm looking for. Hit OK. Save that, yep. Then go back. and find my ice gradient again. And now it blends a lot better. And that's basically it. And of course, um, you know, you can do a lot of different other themes um, if you wanted to. It doesn't have to be ice, obviously. If you're trying to focus more on Christmas, um, you know, you could change the clothes so that everybody's wearing red and green. There's a lot of things you can do here, but essentially, you know, the main parts are obviously isolating everyone from their backgrounds, having some consistent lighting, arranging them in such a way that it looks somewhat pleasant, and then just finding, you know, techniques for addressing where, like, the cutoff parts of the images are, right? In this case, we'd use some layering of people behind people, and then also having the text in the front. Anyway, that's it for this one. If you guys would like to ask any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content I post, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out the Patreon page, which is on the link on the screen. And I'll see you guys next time.